Uh, the reason I'm here tonight is because uh, my partner George Capote came to me a few months ago, almost a year ago exactly, a little bit more, and said, I just heard about a phenomenal product that's going to change all of the medicine. And I said, okay, get out of here. I don't want to hear any more about it. <laughs> uh, he was really uh, aggressive, and he kept after me, after me, after me. So finally I said, okay, I'll tell you what, George, give me a couple months, and I'll look at all the science. Because he told me that there were published journal articles on how this product worked. So I took the time in my schedule to look at all of these articles. When I got through reading all the articles, I understood that we had something very unique. If you want me to make it an analogy, if we had been the first people who invented the penicillin pill, we'd all be retired on a beach in a yacht someplace. So if I can give you another one, it would be if you'd had the ability to have seen that somebody was going to tell you, take this little tube and put it in an artery in the heart and blow it up and you'll save people from having heart attacks, we'd all be millionaires. In fact, the guy who did that was a multi-multi-millionaire. So when I thought about the science, I thought about what I'm about, and I'm a cardiologist. And the cardiologist deals with uh, the disease process that is started by inflammation. So if you wanted to know why I got in it, I got in it because I thought it was something that was really going to be helpful for all my patients. And then I had a second reason. The second reason was because I, I'm fortunate enough to work with a charity that works internationally, and this charity deals with poor people around the world. And you may not know this, but the number one killer around the world is not breast cancer, it's not prostate cancer, it's not AIDS, it's not TB, it's vascular disease. And so as a cardiologist, I was interested in the possibility that this product might be something you give to populations of patients. And that's going to turn out to be the case. So here's how all this works. You can use uh, Bobby's pie again. And think about it instead of a pie, let's call it a cell in your body. A cell is a magnificent, magnificent thing. I mean, if you could ever actually study it in vivo, watching it live, you'd be astounded. And you see all kinds of things going on. But inside this cell, we have an army of workers, and they're called organelles and cytoplasma and reticulum and a bunch of other names, and they are like factory workers. And this is the general here. If we were in the old cigar industry, we'd call them the lector who was sitting up there giving directions. This uh, nucleus and the cell, the general, tells the cell, with all the input I'm getting, the messages I'm getting, we need to manufacture A, B, C, and D. So you guys start manufacturing. And so when we're young and growing, we need to make cell membranes. We need to make protein. We need to make cholesterol. We need to make all kinds of things. And that's what these things do. But because we all have one thing in common, the need for energy, and we get that energy from the combustion of food, and oxygen. And we put that energy into the nucleus in the little cells called mitochondria. Now don't worry, I'm not going to give you a test. But what happens <coughs> is we take this in and we combust oxygen and food and we get energy. When we combust it, we also get something we don't want. We get side products called free radicals. I'll write that down for you so it sticks in your head. Free radicals. They're not so free, but they are radical. <laughs> that is to say, they're unstable compounds that if not immediately neutralized, attach any place they can, just like sticky glue, and cause damage to your tissues. That damage elicits a response from our body called inflammation. The root cause of all disease and organs going awry is inflammation. If I say it another way, the root cause of all disease is oxidation from food and oxygen because we make free radicals. And we're obliged to do it, and the only time we'll stop doing it is when we die. 
So what happens is, is that we take in oxygen and food, we make free radicals, they attach to our cell, and we cause, I'll just make, put an I here, inflammation. Inflammation, you know what that is. When you got a cut and it heals up or a scratch, and you see that all seeping stuff, that's inflammation. Whether a surgeon makes it or whether we get it because of an accident. The end result of all inflammation is a scar. A scar means you're replacing normal tissue. So if it's in your liver, you're replacing the liver. That's called cirrhosis when you have too much to drink. <coughs> if you put it in your lungs, it's called pulmonary fibrosis. So on and on. Every disease that elicits inflammation ends up with scar being formed. So what happens is, as we get older and older, we're making, at the beginning of our life, lots and lots of antioxidants. Antioxidants to fight the free radicals. Okay? So, antioxidants neutralize the free radicals. But as we get older and older, we make less and less antioxidants and more and more inflammatory molecules because we're getting more and more free radical damage. And we can't avoid it. So what we have then is an imbalance of the normal situation. When we were young and handsome like George with all of his hair, you know, you, we, we were young and we had a lot of antioxidants. Now we have too much inflammation going on. So what happens is along comes this product called Protandum, which is an herbal product, and it is something that activates the NRF2 system. What is that? It's a protein that sits over here and is the messenger to the nucleus to make antioxidants and survival genes. So what Protandum does, here's Protandum, it goes up here this is anchored in the cell. It's there, attached. It causes it to be cleaved apart. The nucleus gets the message, we need more antioxidants, and we start making millions of antioxidants again. Not vitamin C one to one, not vitamin D one to one, millions of antioxidants are being produced per second because we've had the master gene regulator Send the message to the general, hey general, we're getting overwhelmed here. We need to send an army of antioxidants in here to fight these free radicals. If not, we're going to have big time trouble. That's called aging. If you're looking at it from a cellular point of view, that's exactly why we get old. That's exactly why we get diseased. So if you look at it that way, then if you had something that neutralizes free radicals, and you knew that everybody in the world should be taking it. Is there a question? I take it. My family takes it. I recommend it to all my patients. And the reason I do is, after I read the articles, I said, OK, now let me see if it's true. So I took a whole bunch of folks. I measured their inflammatory markers. And remember, if you got a lot of injury, you got inflammation, right? So in the blood, we can measure their inflammatory markers. And then we can put them on protandum. And if that does what it's supposed to do, we should see all these inflammatory markers drop down to low levels of normal. And in fact, all of you who've seen that ABC video, that's exactly what happens. They measured it in T-bars. We don't have that. That's a research tool. But we can measure inflammatory markers in all of our patients including Dr. Monsko's patients. When you do that, you will find all of their markers returning towards normal. What that means to me as a physician is that this product is in fact activating the NRF2 pathway and causing millions of molecules of antioxidants and less and less inflammation and patients get better. Now, we don't claim that we cure any disease, but I can tell you that the basis of all disease is just what I outlined for you. And if that's true, then if we can make that happen, we're doing something to retard the progression of disease. 
we will never stop it because until we die, we're going to be having oxidative stress. But we can retard it and we can make things a whole lot better very quickly. So my excitement about this is that it meets my two criteria. It's good for my patients. It's based in science that's real. It's been validated by my colleagues, both in the laboratory and in the, clini in the clinical arena. And it is applicable to populations. So this is a product that I would recommend to every <coughs> single human being because it does what it does. So it's, it's a unique opportunity in terms of medicine. And you're going to ask the next question, why doesn't my daughter, doctor tell me about it? Because your doctor doesn't know about it. This technology has been worked out and is still being worked on in the last 10 years. In fact, the first international conference on NRF2 technology and its implications just occurred this past January in Europe. There's a second one coming up in August, I think. So most of the clinical world has no idea what this is all about. You are pioneers, just like the folks who discovered penicillin, if you get involved with it. And if you don't want to get involved with a business, I still tell you as a physician, you should be taking the product. The company has four products, and just to make one last point, all four of them activate the system. All four of them. And that's the important part. The technology of the company has been utilized to be put in different arenas, and, and those arenas all activate the immune system's NRF2 pathway. There you go. Thank you.